Mia. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? I'm doing great. So excited to finally do this and and talk about everything you and mothering and formula and all of it. Everything that you're doing is so important, not only obviously founding by heart, but also just being a mom lots of little kids and I think for all of us as moms like this whole feeding situation is something that can bring on a lot of stress and can also feel very also like a thing that people just don't know about so I'm excited to to get into all of it so how old is your youngest right now my youngest is two and then I have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. So you have an eight-year-old. So eight years ago, when you had the baby and you were faced with breastfeeding, do you remember your mindset going into having the baby and your mindset on breastfeeding and what that would look like for you or what you hoped that it would look like? I love this question because I think that so many people go into parenthood with all these ideas about what feeding will be like or what they'll be able to do or, you know, and then you become a parent and so many circumstances impact your feeding choices, right? Like your your own health, your baby's health, your work situation, your so many different things, your family situation, I mean, everything. So when I had Nev, I kind of told myself, yeah, I'm going to do the breastfeeding thing. Everyone tells me it's the healthiest thing for my babies and it's the most natural thing, so I'm going to do it. And, you know, I went into it, I started, but it was so hard. Like, I just remember so many nights, like I was screaming, she was screaming. (laughs) Like nobody tells you how hard it's gonna be. And I always wanted to be a mom and I was so grateful to be a mom, but I also wanted to be other things. I wanted to be a wife, I wanted to to work hard and um, balancing all of it was super stressful because, you know, it's very time consuming, you know, nobody really talks about just all the, all the challenges around breastfeeding. So I went into it saying like, I'm going to do this. I can do it. It was this challenge, but I really needed a, an alternative really quickly just to help me balance it all. And so when I started looking for a formula, like so many other parents, like I just was overwhelmed by the the challenge of finding something that I could feel really good about. It felt like no matter what I was reaching for, I'd have to compromise. It was like, oh, you want the clean one or the one for a good immune system or for a brain a good brain health or or, you know, it just there wasn't something where I could say, this makes me feel good the way you know, so many people talk about breastfeeding. It was a very like emotional experience. It's so true. It's so hard because it's one of those things that women don't really need or want to hear like until they're actually in it. Like they're not they're not asking the questions until it's something that's affecting them. So it's hard to really like prep women for this. And that's why these conversations are important. I think for anyone out there that's pregnant or thinking about becoming pregnant and is interested in what this looks like. It is, for me, I wish I had heard some of these conversations beforehand, but I know that I wasn't necessarily looking for it. I had the same experience as you. Like I went into it with, I was like, okay, breastfeeding, like if my milk comes in, great, then we're going to breastfeed. And if it doesn't come in, then I'm not going to stress about it. And I honestly thought it was as simple as that. Little did I know that, yeah, okay, if it comes in, it's like, even for me, like more scary, because then that then there's the responsibility of of dealing with it, I'm making a plan around it. And so the breast milk for me came in. And I remember being in the hospital and I remember the nurses telling me to constantly just keep the baby on the nipple, keeping him there as much as I possibly could. And they kept on telling me that they were going to have a lactation consultant come in, but no one came in and I didn't really understand the importance of that. Now I would say for anybody who's in the hospital that they should see a lactation specialist if they're trying to breastfeed in the hospital before they go home, make sure that they do that before they go home. But I got home from the hospital, nipples 
cracked, bleeding, excruciating pain every single time Sunny was on my breast. Him freaking out, me freaking out, feeling like I was the worst. And it totally tainted the really the first six months of having my baby. It was like I couldn't even see the light in it or the positive in it because the breastfeeding was so hard for me. And also I got home and so I was in such excruciating pain. I'm like, what are my options? And I looked at luckily I had a baby baby nurse and she was like do you have any formula and I'm like no I I didn't know to have that I just thought my milk was probably likely going to come in and I was going to be fine and so I remember that night first night coming home Timmy went to the Walgreens down at the corner and brought home Enfamil I was like I I didn't even have the opportunity to research, to know if I wanted to give formula, to know what kinds of formula, the pros versus the cons. It was just like this thing that I had to do. And it's just, it's obviously come such a long way. And there's formula companies like by heart now that we can look to, to like trust and we know have amazing ingredients in them, but that hasn't always been the case. So tell me about the the impetus behind the formula and how it's different from the other formulas out there. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I'll just say I am also so shocked that I went into parenthood so unprepared and that when I needed formula, it was like this last minute stress of, okay, I need it so fast. I can't even think about what I'm getting because it's such a panic yeah. and it feel like shit because every other big experience, every other big thing in our lives, like we prepare for, you even prepare the baby's room or you go into an interview, you do some research before, but we go into parenthood and into feeding, which is such a big thing. It's keeping them alive at that stage. It's literally your biggest responsibility. (laughs) And culturally, for some reason, people are still only ever talking to us about breastfeeding before we have a baby. Like, why aren't we just talking about feeding generally? Like, hey, so many different things can happen when the baby comes. There is no way to predict it. And you deserve to go in feeling really prepared for whatever comes. So like, feel prepared for breastfeeding, feel prepared for formula feeding just feel prepared and think about it ahead so it's not such a urgent mad rush yeah not only feel prepared but feel okay knowing that there are other options and that it doesn't mean that you're less than if you can't feed your baby in this way that you see everybody else is doing it or is the best way you know I've even said to myself if I do end up having a second kid and I do feel like this is easier said than done that I don't even know that I would put the pressure on myself to even try to breastfeed again because of how it was for me that first six months and I'll even just go into a little more detail before are you getting into it? But just for everyone out there, like I ended up exclusively pumping for six months after. It was too excruciating for Sunny to be on my boob that I ended up just pumping, got mastitis three times, which it feels like the worst flu. It's basically like an infection. It is an infection in your body of the breast milk. And I remember after the second time of, of getting mastitis, I was like, I'm not doing I, if this happens one more time. And I like, I think even after the first time I said that and I kept on torturing myself over and over and over again just to give Sonny what I thought was the best for him at a complete sacrifice of myself. And it doesn't have to be that way. You know, like you can enjoy that period and not feel like a bad mom. Yeah. And you know what else people don't tell you is that if you're stressed, your breast milk goes down or Mm -hmm. if you're sleep deprived or, and you are going to be all those things, you know, Mm -hmm. it's not like if you have milk, you're just smooth sailing, like your body is adjusting all the time. And so, you know, I'd have to travel for work or I'd get stressed or I was sleep deprived or I was dehydrated. And it just, it was like one day I had milk, one day I didn't. I actually, like, my left boob had a lot of milk, my right boob. And, like, it was crazy. It's crazy um, what we go through. <laughs> and it's such, like, an emotional journey. But that is exactly kind of why we started by heart. Because if you can feel proud of the formula option that you have, 
then you can feel like, hey, you know what? I actually have options. Like, why is it like, you know, until now it has felt like breastfeeding is good and formula feeding is bad. It doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. So when we started by heart, you know, there were three big companies that had been making our formula for decades and decades. And the formulas really hadn't changed Mm -hmm. uh, very much. And, you know, me too, with my first, I also used Enfamil. I used Enfamil Gentiles and these were kind of like the options, but we started by heart because we knew that we understand more about breast milk now than ever before. We know what are the ingredients in it? What are the benefits? Also, there's such high quality ingredients. Um, so the tools are there to make a better formula, but innovating in this space is incredibly difficult. If you're mm-hmm. truly going to create a new formula, you have to do a nationwide clinical trial. Right. You have to get FDA registration. And there's only one contract manufacturer that makes all the formulas for the new brands. So every formula company before us use the same contract manufacturer. And they say, oh. you'll just be the brand. We'll give you a formula and you'll launch it in a year. Just like but a that, licensing deal, essentially. And that's not what we were there to do. We were like, no, we are here to make a better formula. We have worked with the world's leading experts in pediatric nutrition, in breast milk science. We've created a recipe from scratch that gets closer to breast milk than ever before with high quality ingredients like grass fed organic whole milk with taking out the ingredients you would never want in your formula like corn syrup and palm oil and soy. We created this proprietary protein blend that is the closest to breast milk that has in it proteins that are most abundant in breast milk that mm-hmm. ha- that have virtually not been in uh, formulas in the U.S. to date. And so there were all these ways that we created a better formula, but we couldn't make it with a contract manufacturer because right. that, that wasn't their business. So we learned really quickly that in order to make a new and better formula, we had to build an entire supply chain ourselves, go out and handpick every ingredient and directly partner with suppliers, build our own manufacturing plan, run a clinical trial. It just, it really shocked us that there was just one manufacturer that made formulas for all of the challenger brands and that there wasn't a possibility to truly innovate with them. We were like, Mm -hmm. this is the most important food for our most important people. It's so true. We have to do better. And we can't believe that the infrastructure isn't there today to do it. Mm -hmm. And so really quickly, we're like, okay, we have to build this from scratch, a new recipe, a new supply chain. And it took us five years to get to market. Yeah, I mean, and that's not even that long at all. But what would you say? Because for me, I feel like there's this one thing that sticks in my head. I remember having a conversation with a doula. I think it was on this podcast, actually. I was talking to her about breastfeeding and I was like, just tell me the truth. Like, is breast milk better than formula? She was like, that is such a loaded question because better can mean so many different things. Like you said, is it is feeding the formula going to be emotionally better for the mom and then better for everyone? Like, the you know, there's so many different answers. But she did say that in terms of the immune system, that there was something in breast milk that for the first six weeks that was really good for babies. And I just want to talk about that and talk about how with By Heart's formula, what's in there that so that we can feel like we're not giving them less than what our body could potentially you know? Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, breast milk is both the most natural nutrition and also the most functional. Mm -hmm. So we really use that as a blueprint as we were building our formula. Also, because we heard from parents, they said, I want clean ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course you want clean ingredients. That is so important. Mm -hmm. But you also deserve ingredients that support your baby's immune system and gut health and brain and digestion. And, you know, this is the most important stage in development when all of baby systems uh, are developing. And this Mm -hmm. is foundational food. We Mm -hmm. need a clean formula with high quality ingredients. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, created a formula that we then in a clinical trial, prove the health benefits. So it's not even empty marketing claims. It was important to us that we did a clinical trial where you could actually see the proof Mm -hmm. so that you 
truly believe it because parents have trouble believing it. And so it was important to us to empower parents with data. And so Mm -hmm. what we did was we looked at every element of breast milk and every element of formula. You know, it's a baby's full diet. There are proteins and carbs and fats and vitamins and minerals. And we saw that it was actually the proteins that were so different in formula and in breast milk. Like Mm -hmm. the two most abundant proteins in breast milk were virtually missing from formulas. Mm -hmm. And so we started studying this and we saw that actually protein is responsible for so many things. It's responsible for digestion. So usually when babies don't digest formula well, it's because of the protein composition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we realized that these proteins in breast milk also support the immune system and the gut. And so that's what led us to really create this patented protein blend of these proteins in breast milk that support so many of the important systems. And then we really proved out those benefits in our clinical trial. Like, you know, the babies on by heart had less spit up, easier Mm -hmm. digestion and softer poops. and Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. better nutrient absorption. Babies actually sleep longer on our formula, probably because they're more comfortable. They have more efficient weight gain, just all these really important benefits. And our hope was that parents could look at this clinical trial, look at the ingredients and feel a lot of pride. Like, hey, you know what? I'm feeding formula. I'm supporting Mm -hmm. all my baby systems and I'm doing great. And Mm -hmm. I can feel really proud of the way I'm nourishing my baby. So I feel like you probably felt that and felt that in the difference between your eight-year-old and your two-year-old and the feeding journeys probably look different because you had by heart two years ago. What did your feeding journey look like with your last? I um, have been building the company while building my family. So started the company when Nev, my oldest, was only one. Uh And then when I had Raphael, we were still building it. And then finally with Simone, I was able to feed Feed her by heart. Yeah. Uh, but what's so interesting is that your feeding journey with every baby is so different. And right. you go into it thinking it's going to be the way it was with the last one. Mm-hmm. But actually, it's a completely different person. <laughs> yeah. With yeah. my second, with Rafa, I actually only eight weeks into it, my appendix ruptured and I had to go to the hospital. And what was crazy is that while breastfeeding was incredibly challenging and painful for me with my first, Mm -hmm. with the second, it came a little bit easier. And so I was starting to get into a rhythm and I was excited that it was a little bit easier this time. And then my appendix ruptured and I had to go on medication where I couldn't breastfeed and I Mm -hmm. had to be in the hospital for a long time. And again, it was like this complete unknown and lack of control like we have no control over this and that's I think what's the hard part especially when you think about having more than one kid too is like you think you've you kind of have got it all figured out and I think that we have to like take a step back and realize that yes like every baby is different our circumstances are different and what's most important is is obviously that they're getting fed you know yeah Yeah. Yeah. and so With um, Simone, my third, it was an amazing moment as a founder to be able to be both the founder and also a customer. Yeah. And then it really came full circle after so many years of working on this formula. And I just feeding so intimate and um it was really great to be able to feed Simone a formula that I knew that we obsessed over every last detail Mm -hmm. like if it's in there it's in there for a reason because of what it does for your health because of how it supports your baby part of the kind of journey of making our formula was also about discovering so much about the formula category. When we launched, we became only one of five manufacturers in the entire country. And there hadn't been a new manufacturer in 15 years, probably because of how difficult it is to really build up a new manufacturing facility. The good news is that the regulations are very stringent in the U.S. As they should um, be, yeah. Because they need to protect our most vulnerable consumers. We just couldn't believe that there were ingredients that were better, like, for example, whole milk. You know, we know when our baby turns one, that the doctor wants us to just feed baby as much whole healthy fats as possible. And yet we discovered that in formula in the US until today, it was all skim milk. 
and whey protein concentrate. And we couldn't understand why. And we kept asking all the nutrition experts, like, why do we use skim milk? Why do we use skim milk? And right. just kept hearing answers we didn't want to hear, like, oh, it's cheaper or it's easier to use or it's easier to manufacture. And so we were the first to kind of bring whole milk to the US and get it approved and include it in our formula. And there are many examples of that. Like we use the number one protein and colostrum, such an important ingredient that wasn't in the US. So it was really a journey of like discovering so many things about the US market and then and then working to change it so that we could really raise the standard of formulas in this country. I think that for me, once I ended up switching to formula, I think it was four months when I started having to mix a little bit of formula like with my milk. And it was just the biggest weight lifted off my shoulders. And I was so resistant to it. And everybody else was telling me, do it, do it, do it. And sometimes I feel like we are our own worst enemies. Like nobody else out there actually really cares or has an opinion or thinks like less of you for doing this. It's you that are are being your own, you know, worst enemy. And so I think that like once I release that, and started to live my life with this like new reality. I had regrets. I mean, I had regret. I was like, why didn't I do this sooner? Like I could have enjoyed Sunny so much more. I could have, you know, all the coulda, woulda, shouldas. So I think that we can be, especially when it's our first, like we can get stubborn and we think that things have to go a certain way or we've pictured them going this way. And if they don't, then that means it's going poorly. But it's like, that's not what parenting is about. And I think breastfeeding is like the, one of the first first issues with them parenting where you're faced with like, I don't have full control over this situation and I have to do what's best for, for me and my family. And like, for me, it was mentally taking that load, the physical and emotional load of having to feed my child. It allowed me to like see life in a totally different way. I was going to say something we also believe that doing something that will give you relief and that will go easier on you is like you're choosing you over your baby when actually a happier mom or a happier dad is a happier baby like your baby feels your energy mm -hmm. and you know when we're when we feel good and when we're at our best it means that everyone can be at their best. And it's so, so it's like, how do we change it to say, if this is going to give you some relief or if this is going to help you, then it's going to help your baby too. Better exactly. for you is better for your baby. So if you want to supplement with a feed or you want to sleep through the night or you want to fully transition or you need to like whatever it is, like going easy on yourself is actually better for everyone. It's so um, true. And it's a good thing. You're like investing yeah. in yourself. You're investing in your baby. Our health, our happiness, our wellness is so connected. Ours and our babies. Uh, we have to take, we have to like think holistically about how we're taking care of ourselves and our babies at the same time, which can feel so overwhelming. Yeah. And it just feels wrong. Like it feels like you're okay. You're becoming a mom and it's like, you should just be doing everything so that the baby has the best of everything, but you're, you're not like really thinking intuitively, like you said, or thinking big picture. And I think also for me with Sunny, like that was six years ago and by heart wasn't around. So I I feel like I was a little justified in feeling like I don't know if I want to give formula to my baby because I didn't know about it. There wasn't a company like a by heart that I could turn to that I could trust. And so there was this like negative connotation with formula. But I think what you guys are doing is like not only creating an amazing product, but maybe changing the way that moms are thinking about formula and creating like some space for them to actually enjoy it without so much pressure. And when we have a second kid, like I just feel so much relief knowing that this is there for me. Yeah, we want you to be able to be like feeling confident, feeling like you have tools to navigate whatever happens. Yeah. And before it didn't feel that way. We want to bring 
parents into our world, into our journey, so that you can really see, like, this is a company that cares and obsesses over your baby's health and your baby's wellness and their nutrition and really be parents' partner in that feeding journey. Yeah, I think that's what's also so important about By Heart is the community that you've built as well. Like, it's not only just about the product. There's a team of people that really care about each person. And it just feels nice to know that there can be a plan and education along with the product. So talk to me now about like where the company's at, what's on the horizon, just like what's going on at By Heart at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've been around now for seven years, took us about five years to launch. Now we have three facilities in the U.S. We really control every step of the manufacturing and packaging process, and we can continue to maintain and continually raise the bar on our standards. Our small batch blending process is all about protecting the ing- the integrity of the ingredients, because mm-hmm. if you take a bunch of great ingredients and then you destroy them in manufacturing, then it doesn't have any more of that goodness. And mm-hmm. so really having control of every step is what's allowed us to create the superior product, but it took a long time. We had to raise $300 million in capital (laughs) in order to like do clinical research, to invest in innovation, to build all these facilities, but it's because we want to be a reliable, trusted partner to as many parents as possible. We started by launching direct to consumer because that intimate relationship with our customers is everything. Yeah. Like we're listening to them every day. What's working for you? What's not? What support do you need? Our parent experience team, you know, the questions that come in are not just about like, where's my order? It's, you know, questions about feeding, about how to do it, about how to transition, about what's in the formula. So Mm -hmm. Um, direct to consumer is such like at the heart of the company, Mm -hmm. but then it was important for us to be accessible. And so we launched nationwide with target. We're in 90% of their stores across the country, which has been amazing. Amazing. And now this year we're continuing to expand into more retail. Oh, we're also on Thrive Market. We, oh, amazing. We love Thrive because of their commitment to clean and quality yes. and making that more accessible. We also work with Baby List because Baby List is supporting parents as they're preparing for parenthood. And we want to be there from the beginning. We're their first registry partner in Formula. Really incredible partnerships. And mm-hmm. then the other thing we're really focused on this year is our open-hearted formula donation program. So we work with Baby to Baby. 1% of all formula sales go to donating formula to families in need. Amazing. And that's been part of our business plan from day one. And as we ex- as we grow the company, we're growing that uh, commitment. We're able to give more. Yeah. I cannot even imagine having to raise that much money and the stress that must have come with that and building this and all of the the like red tape and no's that you got. As an entrepreneur and someone that looks up to you, are there any tips or words of wisdom or like mantras that you live by as you were growing this that you continued to tell yourself to like get through it all? Something that I really learned over the years is that you just have to keep fighting for the mission. Mm -hmm. Like, you know where you need to get to and you're going to have a lot of no's Mm -hmm. and it's not going to happen. It's like parenthood. It's not going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. Right. (laughs) Like twists and turns and and you just got to just keep going. It's true. And that as you go, you build momentum. And, Mm -hmm. you know, at the beginning, it was my brother and I, but then we found all these nutrition experts and PhDs and breast milk researchers and all these people who are like, this is such important work. We want to get behind it. And here's all of our research that we've done on breast milk and how we can translate it into better formulas. And they joined us and then this incredible team. And, you know, we kept gaining momentum. And so the first thing was just being like so focused on the mission, knowing that there are yeah. going to be a lot of no's, yeah. but that we got to navigate the no's and keep pushing. Yeah. I always think about my kids so often. It's like, mom, can we do this? No, sorry, we can't do that. Why? Why, right. why, why, why? Like, that's kind of how we are. It's like when we hear no's, we say, why? Exactly. There is a way to push. Turn through. the no into a yes. Yeah. 
just knowing that we're doing something that hasn't been done before and that it's going to require kind of really creative thinking and taking no's and, and meeting them with whys. Yeah. And then I guess the other thing is just like real partnership is everything. Again, I mean, it's so funny how like parenthood is everything, but like when you have those friends or you have a partner or whatever, it was like, Hey, how about we do this? Or let's take it step by step together. Like that's everything. And so I'm like grateful for the team that we keep building. And whenever we hire, we say, it's not just about your expertise. It's about who you are as a person. Like, how do you face adversity? How do you kind of push through? Does that energize you? And we have this incredible team that we're, that we're building with this way then. Totally. I feel like the ethos of the team and the character of the team is so important in a company like this, for sure. So your life now with three kids and this, I mean, the the company's not like a baby, but it's like it's it's a toddler, maybe. And like it's starting to take off. How are how do you take care of yourself like now how do you find moments for yourself I'm trying to figure that out every yeah. day <laughs> I think sometimes when I, I ask people a lot of people have that question I'm happy that I ask because I want you to have to think about it so that you actually will do it yes exactly and I think having other female founders or women doing amazing things and showing that you can figure it out. Like you can figure out how to be a mom and be another part of yourself at the same time. Like that gives me so much strength when it's like, Hey, how are you doing it? What's your tips and tricks? Cause I don't think it's one thing always. It's like, I try and think of my life in three month periods. Like, you know what? I'm working hard. I'm leaning a little more into like founder me. And then, Oh, this is a period where I'm going to make up for that and like lean a lot more into being mommy or catching up with friends or like really focusing on my husband. I think that we have this pressure to balance it all and do it all, all at the same time. But I've started to tell myself, you can't do everything all at the same time, but, it, but you don't have to think of doing everything all in this moment, but right. over a period of time. And so it gives me a little bit of leeway or like, ability to go a little bit easier on myself like okay yes I'm I'm leaning too heavy here I'm gonna Mm -hmm. next I'm gonna lean back the other way I just am trying to be really aware of what brings me happiness like yeah putting kids to bed yeah and falling asleep in their beds at 8 p.m just brings me happiness it brings me calm and just knowing that and therefore trying to like be home for that time is it important or taking my kids to school twice a week? I can't every day, but like right. just kind of saying, these are the things that make me happy that I'm going to try and fit in and then putting it in my calendar. Like it's as important as a meeting. You know right. what I mean? Like right. sometimes people say to me, I'm so sorry. I have to pick my kid up from school. I can't join that meeting. It's like, that is as important. It's more important. It should be in your calendar. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't mm-hmm. be like something we apologize for. It should be something that we that we're proud of, that we're figuring out how to like put it all in the calendar. It's like your responsibility as the, you know, founder of this company to help set those boundaries for your team that this is as picking up your kid from school is as important as this meeting and like really, really believing that because then I think that they believe that and then they won't feel guilty about it, which is what we all are just feeling constantly, you know? So it's a lot, but I do think that even the formula in and of itself is a form of self-care for for us you know what I mean like you may not look at it like that but it is checking off the box of something that may be causing you that stress so I yeah I am so appreciative of you coming on and and sharing all of this with us and so grateful that a company like by heart exists now. Tell us where we can find it and follow. Yeah, you can find it on byheart.com subscription or a la carte. You can go to your local Target. You can go to Baby List, Thrive Market, lots of lots of places. Amazing. Yeah. Byheart.com. Simple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or byheart on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. We'll be in touch. Okay. Bye.